When OpenAI revealed GPT-4, they decided to show how smart it was. They gave it the most iconic tests in American education, and it got a perfect five on both the AP macroeconomics exam and the AP microeconomics exam. And this scared me because even though today I'm a professional economist, even I did not get perfect fives on the AP exams when I took them. Now, even though people are saying that this is going to completely eliminate any reason to learn anything, I decided to say, this is a way for me to learn from a master. And let me tell you, I am learning so much using AI in my everyday life. And in this video, I wanna show you some of the tricks that I'm using to become a better economist, including one that is so amazing, it is practically magic, and I almost feel like I'm cheating at my job. First, let's start with how AI can help you find your lens. See, when you first start learning economics, especially if you're really going into self-directed learning, it's like you're a camera without a lens. When you open up the shutter, it's bombarded by the light, but without a lens, it can't actually get a defined image. And it's the same thing with going through everyday life trying to learn economics. You get bombarded by so many economics lessons, so many economics news, so much is being discussed. It feels like you're being immersed in economics and yet not actually forming any concrete details. But a lens takes that light and focuses it on a specific image and allows you to form a rich, detailed picture of the light that's coming in. And we can use AI the same way. Instead of being bombarded by the news, you could use AI to develop a curriculum to get into the topics that you're really interested in. Now, I'm actually gonna do a live demonstration of this. I have Bing on here, and Bing is connected to OpenAI's GPT-4. And I'm just gonna ask it to teach me about economics. Now I find that saying teach me about economics is gonna be a little too broad. So I'm gonna try two different approaches here. First, let's imagine that you're trying to learn just economics from scratch and you're at the very beginning of your education. Well, you can ask GPT-4 or Bing in this case to create a syllabus for you. And the more specific you are by saying like what you're looking for in a syllabus, the better the output you're going to get. So the prompt that I've put in here is I'm trying to learn economics at an introductory level. I don't have any background. Create a syllabus for me that is 25 topics that I need to understand in order to have a good foundation in economics. So at first it says introduction to economics. I actually find that's not going to be that helpful. Maybe if I start asking about introduction to economics, maybe we get in there, but then scarcity and choice. That's perfect. Opportunity cost, production possibility frontier, de demand and supply. You're starting to see that it's clearly covering the topics that you really need to understand when you're in introductory economics. Now, if you're watching this video, you're probably somebody who is not in introductory economics, but you probably want to understand more about certain fields of economics. So you could easily do the same thing for a field that you're interested in. So I've asked it, I'm interested in why some countries are rich and some are poor. I have a foundational understanding in economics, but I haven't taken development economics. What are 25 topics that I need to understand to be a competent development economist? All right, so again, it has spit out 25 topics and the categories as I'm just like briefly looking over them are correct, but right now they're a little bit too broad for what I'm interested in, right? Economic growth, obviously important, poverty, inequality, we get to education, health, infrastructure, institutions, all of these things are making sense. And they're things that are good for me to make sure that I understand. But right now, obviously I'm not learning much, but that's when you really get to adjust the focus of that lens. Because now I can ask it to give me a lesson on one of these topics and I can really dive into that and learn more. And this is where I really feel like I need to give you a warning because learning economics is a lot like cracking open a piggy bank full of foreign currency. If you're not sure about how the currency is valued, you could very easily pick a low denomination bill because it looks like it's something really valuable. As you're using the AI, you're going to be served up 
all of these bills. And some of them are gonna be super valuable, but some of them are going to look like $2 bills. I uh, actually have a $2 bill right here. It's not in great shape, but people will be like, man, do you know how much that is worth? Those are super valuable, don't spend them. As a result, everybody would hold on to the $2 bills. But I can tell you how much it's worth. It's worth $2. Somehow, every elementary school kid got onto the same misconception that $2 bills were going to be worth way more than their face value. And we get kind of the same thing with AI. Often it tries to give you something valuable, but it's perpetuating a misconception. So you really need to be careful before you take anything on here at its word. I actually like to think about this as like Wikipedia back in 2008. When Wikipedia first came out, there were so many warnings about it. Watch out, anybody can put anything on there. You never know what's true. And that might have been the case in 2008, but today, Wikipedia is one of the surest sources of information. Even though AI right now is in Wikipedia 2008 mode, I think with how fast it's evolving, very soon we're gonna get to very reliable learning. But in the meantime, and honestly, even when it gets there, you need to be careful about getting things that aren't true. And the places where I see it struggle the most are book references, paper references, anything that needs a specific citation. It looks so accurate but often it is wrong. Once you get past that introductory level or once you get past trying to learn more about a specific topic, you can start bringing this to the next level. Let's talk about how you can use AI to act as a shield and a sword. See, one of the things I think is great about learning economics is that it really protects you from so many misconceptions about science, especially with statistical research. You see so often causal claims about correlations that could be completely spurious. For example, a really easy one to look at is to say, people who go to college make more money. Therefore, going to college causes you to make more money. And you hear this all the time as you're going through school and it feels right, but at the same time, once you start understanding the economics of the situation, you realize all the flaws with that reasoning. So you can actually use AI to help you develop that thinking by posing the question to it and then seeing what suggestions it gives. So now I'm trying to give it a prompt to inspire some of that economic thinking. I see a lot of reports that going to college causes your income to go up. Act like an economist and explain what confounding factors I should worry about. So it starts off by saying, yes, there's a correlation, but then there are several confounding factors that affect this relationship. For example, people who go to college tend to come from wealthier families and have better access to resources that can help them succeed in life. Additionally, people who go to college may have certain personality traits that make them more likely to succeed in careers. And those are the kind of details that economists worry about. It does then go emphasize that yes, we have some good studies that say there is a causal relationship. And I could use this to then try to understand more. What are those studies? How did they find that information? And it would be able to feed that information to me. But I think this really important detail of having a shield to protect myself against misinformation and then a sword coming in and saying, here are the things you need to worry about. Here's how you can attack that problem. It makes this a game changer. Now it's time for me to get into my confession where I'm worried that the way that I'm using this feels like I'm cheating at my job. See, I have been sitting on some data for years. I have these awesome announcements of new businesses in Haiti that I thought would be really interesting to analyze given the crazy political situation that Haiti has been facing over the past decade. But there's a couple of problems. First, there's nearly 6,000 of these announcements. They are unstructured, meaning each announcement looks different, even though they contain the same fundamental information. It's not in the same location. And finally, it's all in French. That means that if I wanted to actually use these and extract the data from it, I needed to find a student who was going to be willing to dedicate months to reading through these notifications, recording the data, and on top of it all, they could read and understand 
French. That was difficult for me for all this time. And so I just sat there not really doing much with this data. Then the other day I had an idea. What if I gave a notification to ChatGPT and asked it to extract the information that I was looking for? I put it through with very little expectations that this was going to work and suddenly it gave me exactly what I was looking for. A process that I thought was going to take months and months of student labor and thousands of dollars in pay only took one night and less than $10. It's basically a cheat code and is inspiring me to look at any way that I can create research out of any text that I come across. And I think this is such a good opportunity for you to think about this because you probably come across lots of unique texts that could be transformed into super interesting research data. And if you know that this hack works, it might change what you consider as valid research as a potential economist. The thing is, even after all of these powerful AI tips, you still need a way to organize everything you're learning. That's why I made this video about the tech that I use to help me as an economist, including the software I use to connect ideas from everything I learn. So make sure you watch that to really get the results you want.